morning, Dave Smith here. So I've come back down to the castle. Uh, we've been here before. Um, I haven't come down with the Rhino Cam today. I've come down with this. <coughs> this is my Sony A6000 full spectrum converted uh, camera. I've put uh, an 850 nanometer uh, IR filter on the front. Now it's a cheap Neewa filter. I'm probably going to upgrade this pretty soon. Um, so that we have to take the 850 nanometers with a little bit of a pinch of salt. But it seems to work okay-ish. And what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to shoot um, an infrared time lapse. Now infrared is incredibly um, finicky. Uh, if if there isn't enough light for it, uh, it, there's no contrast, it's very muddy and really quite disgusting images. But it's a clear blue sky today, uh, clouds are coming in over there, so that's promising for a time lapse. Nice and blue here, <coughs> excuse me, uh, and that makes for nice contrast in, a, in an infrared image. Uh, I'm going to be metering off this green grass. You do a custom, a custom white balance uh, off the grass and that's, that usually works pretty well, uh, I find. Now, I am going to come back here uh, again because um, I want to try um, shooting uh, infrared on film. I've recently acquired a couple of film cameras and I'll make some videos about those. Uh, and I'm going to try the um, Roly 400 infrared film. Uh, out here as well. Uh, that'll probably be the end of my time at uh, Auckland Castle. Uh, I feel like I will have done it justice by then. Anyway, I'm going to get set up for this time lapse. It's taters out here, so my fingers are going numb. I might not be able to operate the, the controls before very long. So um, I hope this is going to be of some interest. Bye for now. Okay, so I think we're going to see how this microphone copes with all this wind. It's been pretty blustery today. Uh, so I've finished my time lapse and I thought I would just say a little bit about the uh, settings. So I started off at uh, f11, ISO 800 and 50th of a second. About two thirds of the way through the clouds had moved in, which is kind of what you want for a time lapse. Uh, but it did mean that the light levels dropped and uh, infrared, uh, particularly uh, certainly digital infrared, does not cope well with underexposure. It gets uh, very muddy, uh, really in an unpleasant way, quite quickly. So about two thirds of the way through, the light level had dropped, uh, so I decided to bump up uh, the exposure and I opened up to f8. And then in the last 15 frames I opened up again to f5.6. Now, I could, I could have not bothered there because, you know, 15 frames isn't even going to be a second when this is made into its time lapse. Uh, but I did anyway. And, of course, that uh, changing the exposure um, will affect how the time lapse looks. But uh, we, we're going to take care of that jump in exposure uh, in uh, post. Uh, so you'll see, I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, do a screencast. I'm going to show you exactly how... I construct this entire time lapse. So we, we've been down here and we've done the shooting. Uh, we, remember we took um, a custom white balance off the grass. Now if you've got a digital camera that allows you to set white balance it will almost certainly allow you to set a custom white balance. Uh, so we did that off the grass and I find that usually works uh, perfectly well. So that's how we've set up, that's the shooting. Uh, oh sorry, and, and just back to settings. I made 400 images uh, at uh, 10 second intervals. Now that's 4,000 seconds. So if that was uh, f uh, 420 images, it would be 4,200 seconds, and that would take 70 minutes. So I think, we, I think I've actually been shooting for 66 minutes and 40 seconds, something like that. That gives me 400 frames, um, and at 24 frames a second, uh, what is that? Well, 25 frames a second, you just make the maths easy, huh? would, uh, would last 16 seconds. So we've basically compressed about uh, 
just over an hour, an hour and six minutes or so, an hour and seven minutes, we've compressed into 16 seconds. Um, and I think it's going to look pretty good, but we'll find out. So I'm going to see you um, when I'm back at home. We'll see you in, uh, in the post. I hope you're enjoying uh, this video. Uh, bye for now. We'll see you in a few minutes. Right, okay, here we are. So we've been to the castle, we've shot our time-lapse sequence, uh, nearly f uh, 399 frames, I believe. And I've previously uh, imported those, they're sitting on my desktop. But before we get into this, let me just say a little bit about my setup here. I built this computer myself. Um, it's a Core i7. Uh, I may well change that in the near future. It's got 32 gigs of uh, RAM. It's got three, uh, three terabyte data drives, half terabyte SSD drive for the system, for programs. But I've also added on a, um, a duplicating caddy, which takes bare bones hard drives. Let me see if I can just grab one um, to show you that. I'll take my microphone piece with me so I don't rip everything apart. Okay, so I've got uh, four of these. These are Western Digital Blacks at two terabytes. So this is what I mean by bare bones hard drive. Normally these would go internal to your system or they'd sit in an enclosure. But I just use them like this because they sit vertically in the caddy and the idea is uh, that the, the caddy is essentially a SCSI to USB uh, adapter and what it would do is duplicate one drive to another but you can just use it as a as a reader uh, to, to read those drives and I use those uh, to store my time-lapse files because when you're shooting hundreds of these files and 400 is quite a small number you might well be well into the thousands for a, a longer time-lapse it eats up drive space really quickly. So I decided that I'd use these external hard drives. I can swap them out very easily. The caddy is hot swappable. I don't really need that, but just in case. So I can swap them out easily and I can store my time-lapse assets on those two terabyte hard drives. So that's my setup. What we've got on the screen in front of us here is time-lapse, LR time-lapse 4. I've also got um, Lightroom open and we've got a couple of utilities open that we're going to talk about. So let's have a look at what goes on. So down here on the left, I've got my uh, various drives and folders. And just here is the one. Here's my desktop. Here's the one that is uh, holding these um, raw files. Now these are um, Sony files. So they're Sony raw files and they will be read by uh, Lightroom. My Fuji... Uh, XT3 files, the raw files are not read by Lightroom, so I have to convert those to uh, DNG first because I use the standalone version of Lightroom because I object to paying rental for software. So I use the standalone and I only use it because I, I, I like this LR time lapse. There are other ways to make time lapses, but I like this way and I'm, I might actually transition to. Uh, DaVinci Resolve so that I can dispense with this and with uh, Lightroom as well. But at the moment this is the workflow that I use now, and so I bought the standalone version and of course that's no longer supported. So uh, it's more difficult to to get the newer RAW files into it. I have to convert to a DNG. Anyway, not with these ones. So if I click on this folder right here, uh, LR time lapse will just load those files in. Okay, now up here, you see it's very quickly, it's drawing the exposure curve here. And you can see it's all over the place. All right, so if we play that now, now it's rendered that preview, you'll see that the exposure bounces about quite a lot from here. Okay. And there we go. Now, I've, that's a bit weird. 
I've previously put um, keyframes in here. Let's have a look. If we click keyframes wizard, this sequence, do you really want to clear them? I am going to clear them. Okay, so now it would, ordin it would ordinarily put seven in for us, and I chose nine. Okay, uh, the holy grail wizard we don't need. That's if you're going from a full daylight to a full night time. Uh, and now what we're going to do is save, uh, save that uh, information to the XMP files and this will then go into Lightroom. So if we open Lightroom and drop that in there and then it should take those in. There we go. Now we're going to import these and I think you'll see, yeah, there you go. You see that first one went pink? And that happens because Lightroom can't, can't set an appropriate white balance for these infrared files. If you look over here, the, uh, the magenta is way out and the green is way down. And ideally what we'd like to do is to turn down the magenta on these and also the temperature uh, but there's a problem if we go to develop and you see that here the temperature and tint are way over to the left we can't turn them down anymore uh, and that's a problem now what you would do then is you would get this piece of software now this is a free utility let me just go here this is a free utility from Adobe it's uh, not supported in this form anymore but this works perfectly well under Windows I have heard in the forums that some people on Macs are having trouble with this because it's no longer supported it's quite quite old now um, now I believe I don't run Macs but I believe that there is uh, a newer version uh, of this software or, or, or a new utility that does it in part the same as this. So what we would do is we'd open, we'd open the file in here and we'd make adjustments and then save the uh, profile. Now I've already done that. Let me show you uh, what we do. So if we go down, so I'm in the develop module. If I go down to the bottom of that, uh, you see down to camera calibration we've got a profile here Adobe standard now if we click on that now I've got there's a whole bunch we can choose from but I've got two at the bottom here this one is a is a profile I made quite a long time ago and isn't really relevant to me anymore I made this one quite recently for the 850 nanometers and if we apply that then bingo that that fixes the white balance. Now all we need to do is get those all the way across all of these files. So we'll select them all then we will go to sync and everything's checked off except calibration because I did this previously and if I sync those then you see up in the left corner it's supplying the sync settings now we are ready to go uh, with that okay now I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do one more thing before we get back into our time lapse I'm gonna go here to transform because you can see on the edge here there's a little bit of keystoning and that's happened because I wanted a bit more sky in this picture so I tipped the camera back a little but this is a super wide lens it's a 9mm Laowa lens and it's caused that little bit of leaning back and we can correct that with transform I would ideally have liked a bit more sky but these, uh, the tilt on these wide angle lenses is pretty sensitive and this building would look like it was flat on its back so let's just uh, apply a little bit of vertical transform and if I adjust that just a touch like this and I constrain the crop bingo then that looks quite nice then we want to sync that all the way across as well and we don't need to worry about that transform is what we'll do and we'll sync all those 
and we should be good to go. Let's have a look. There we go. Okay. Right. So now we are in business and we're ready to... Uh, I'm going to stay in here. Uh, and down here at the bottom where it says filter, filters are off. But if we click on that, we get LRT for keyframes. And that'll pick out those nine keyframes that we started with. And I'm going to start on the left hand side here and I am going to go back up to the top and what am I going to do I'm going to increase the contrast just a slight touch and I'm just going to bring down the highlights just a slight touch like so and I'm going to call that done now what I'm going to do is select this whole line and I'm going to paste that setting into them all. Now, from here on, when we're dealing with the keyframes, we really want, we don't want to use sync, we want to use scripts. And there's an LR time-lapse sync keyframes script right there. And that synced those scripts. Now I'm going to click out of those and I'm going to select the second one. Now the second one is looking okay because remember the exposure stayed pretty constant through that first part. I, I am just going to bring down the exposure just a slight touch too much to there I would say. And I'm going to sync that across all of those. Scripts, keyframe sync, done. There isn't really a lot to do to these files um, they're all looking pretty good I quite like the look of this one we just turn the contrast up again just a touch maybe a bit less than that maybe there I think that looks okay sync that across okay and we'll click out of those click in here I'm going to call that one OK. Now we get into the clouds and things are uh, a bit different. So I'm going to bring that exposure back up somewhat. Not that much. About there. Uh, I'm going to bring those highlights back up just a touch. OK. And I think I might just increase that contrast a little more there we go okay so I think that's looking nice let's paste that across there we go click out click into this one now we're looking a bit hot here so we will bring the contrast down a little touch bring the exposure back to about to about zero okay uh, we can bring the shadows up just a little I think that's maybe looking okay uh, let's let's look at that right let's just compare that one with that one that's not too bad okay so we will sync that across and here we go. Okay, done. All right, and this one. And I think we've got kind of the same deal here. So the, we'll just turn the exposure down a little touch to about there. Take those highlights down. Contrast. Bring those shadows down a bit. Let's compare those. So that one to that one. That's not looking too bad, I don't think. Let's go here. Sync those across. Good, good. Now this one, now. This one's well hot. Now we're towards the end of the sequence here. Now I'm probably going to trim this to a 10 second sequence and we've got about 14 seconds. So we may not even use these frames, but we'll see what we can do with them. 
I think the exposure needs to come down. Maybe something like that. Maybe the contrast. Oh no, too much. Maybe there. Maybe the contrast is going to come up. Maybe the highlights are going to come down. Maybe the shadows are going to come up. Uh, okay, maybe the exposure needs to come down a little touch again. Let's compare those. That one to that one. Okay, so the building is looking a bit dark there. Let's see if we can bring that up. Let's bring the whites down. Okay, let's try that. There to there. The building's not looking nice, is it? See, this is this is the point I was making out in the field. You know, when you get when the light starts to drop, when the light starts to drop, then your your infrared gets very murky. Uh, let's just pull that back up a little touch. Maybe there. Let's try that. Okay, that's not looking too bad on the building. The foreground is a bit messy. Uh, hmm. <coughs> yeah, let's see if we can. Okay, so we've got these. filters here and that's maybe looking a little better eh? these are just a grad filter let's compare that with that oh not bad let's see how it looks uh, here uh, let's take that exposure down a little let's take that contrast up a little and let's move that okay this is looking a little better I think let's turn that contrast Let's take that exposure down. Let's, let's try those. We'll go from here to here. That's looking nice. Right, let's paste that in. Oops. Okay. Script. Paste that in. Okay. And let's try this one. Right, so. The exposure needs to come down somewhat. Maybe to there. Maybe to there. Okay, so the building isn't looking too bad. Let's just compare. There to there, that looks okay. And let's just have a look at that grass. There there that looks okay and let's just see if we can do a little bit with the sky here let's take the exposure down there let's pull that down a ways there okay and let's take the highlights down a little Okay, I think that's not looking too bad. Let's see what we can do with this one. Let's take the highlights down. Okay, let's pull that down a little further. Right, so I think that's not looking too bad now. Let's compare that one with that one. That looks okay. Right, 
Okay, so now um, now I think we are done there. So what we're going to do is to go back up here. We go, we're going to go to our grid view. We're going to select all of these. And we're going to save the metadata to files for those. Okay. Now we should go back to, let's uh, pull this out. Now we should go back to uh, LR time lapse, and we're going to go onto this line. Now we're going to reload that metadata. There we go. Okay, that's good. Now we're going to auto transition, and this is going to perform calculations for us on all those changes. It's going to apply that metadata to all the files but it's, it's going to look at <clears throat> the difference between one keyframe and the next keyframe and it's going to make calculations about how the uh, file should change. So let's apply that. Okay, and you get all those curves, but it's this yellow one that we want here. Okay, so now we are going to save that metadata Okay, and then we're going to go to Visual Previews. Okay, now, <coughs> if you look down here, it's going to make, <coughs> excuse me, it's going to make this pinky purple line, uh, okay, and it's 3% done. So, I'm going to pause everything for a minute or two, and we'll come back when that's finished, and we'll see what they look like. Okay, so here we are back again. And the visual deflicker has finished. Uh, so yes, the visual previews have finished. Let's have a look at the preview. Now that is looking quite a lot nicer. See how bright that sun is. <laughs> okay, so now we've got a little, a little bit of flicker. The if we look at this pink line, the exposure is up and down, up and down, up and down. And that's just the nature of the, of the days, which is what was actually happening there. So we don't want to get rid of too much of that, but we do want to just reduce those little bits of flicker. So we've got this green line now that will tend to smooth everything out. And I can alter that. I can make that smoother or sort of less smooth. So let's... Let's see how that looks. Let's apply that. And then let's try again. And that looks, that looks not too bad. There's a little bit of up and down. We could, we could take that out as well if we wanted and just smooth that a little bit more. Uh, let's give that a go, see how that looks. Let's try that one. Apply that. Ah, there we go. Okay. And it's got rid of that pink line. Let's have a look at that. Oh, sorry, we have to wait a moment while it renders. 19% <coughs> done, so that's going to be a little while as well. So I'm going to pause again right there. Okay, so here we are back again. It's done that processing for the deflicker. Let's have a look at how that looks now. Not too bad so far. Okay, so yeah, I, I feel pretty happy with that. There's still some flickering, but that's, that's how it looked on the day. We don't want to remove all of that because that would give us a false impression of the day. But we don't want so much of it either. 
Okay, so I'm just going to click save again. We've saved that already. Now, if we go back to Lightroom, we're going to uh, we're going to change from this filter. We're going to go to full sequence. We're going to select all. Then we are going to uh, just remind myself. Um, we're going to read the metadata from files. <coughs> And it'll read all that metadata. It'll read the metadata for for the um, the flicker, for the visual previews, for the calculations that LR time lapse did to transition from one keyframe to the next. Uh, it's going to read all that metadata now into all of the files, and then we will be ready. Just about done. There we go. So now what we're going to do is go to export and we're going to go to LR time lapse. Now we've got a load of uh, options in here. I'm going to use the JPEG 4K option here. Next one from a collection. Uh, okay, so we made a slight error. We'll cancel that. We don't want to go from a collection, we want to go from the actual folder. So we go to folder in library. Now we'll do the same thing again, export, uh, we want this one, uh, here it just tells us where the LR time lapse is, uh, the output path is going to that same drive, uh, name of the sequence, I'm going, to, I'm going to leave it at that, this incidentally is one of our, um, one of our two terabyte caddy external drives, the bare bones drives, uh, and it's just going to output all these JPEGs. When it's output them, it's going to uh, it's going to call the LR time lapse video render dialog. So we're going to export these and prepare to export and then it's going to export 399 photos. Now if you're familiar with Lightroom you'll know that it's painfully slow on its export. So this, this is going to take quite a long time so I'm going to uh, pause this uh, recording again and we'll come back when this export is finished and I'll show you the final step. Uh, okay so here we are back again and Lightroom has finished its export and when it finished its export it pops up this video render screen from LR time lapse. Let's have a quick look at that. So uh, we've got the task, that's this one. The output file is going to uh, that same drive and it's going into it's going to be called all this. I won't read all that out. It's uh, selected at 1080p at the moment. I'm going to change that no, uh, I'm going to change that to 4K and you see that changes 4K UHD in there. I could get full 4K here, uh, so I'm going to have full 4K. Then what will happen is that uh, I will re-render the video in 1080p, so I've got both versions. Um, 24 frames per second, which is uh, my preference. Uh, quality is as high as I can get it. We only get uh, one option for sampling because of the um, codec that we're using. If we chose ProRes, we'd get these other uh, options as well. Um, but I, I don't have a ProRes workflow. Uh, a little bit of motion blur uh, just helps the, the look of the final thing. And now I'm going to render the video. And that'll be, that'll be it uh, for, this, uh, for this video. As I say, I'm going to do it twice. I will then take everything, the sequences that we shot at the castle, uh, all of this stuff, I'm going to bring it all into DaVinci and make it up into a video. I'll upload that onto YouTube so you'll get to see the final, um, the final time lapse. I will also render the time lapse uh, uh, separately. I'll make a separate time lapse video uh, which will go onto YouTube as well uh, so you can see it. Uh, out of this context if you want. So I hope all that has been 
uh, at least of some interest uh, and maybe even some, some use uh, to somebody. Uh, thanks very much for watching.